Every once in a while, a fighter comes along with a technique so unique and so powerful that it allows them to dominate even the most elite competitors. True, many grow to rely too much on their strengths and are eventually forced to face the stark realization that at a certain level, they simply do not have the tools necessary to set up their ace in the hole. But a rare few do lean on their natural talent and also continue to grow, pushing far past what they once were. In boxing, this was Manny Pacquiao learning to use his jab and footwork to set up his powerful left hand, eventually taking belts in eight weight classes. And in kickboxing, this was an elite martial artist so good that he lived up to his nickname of Mr. Perfect. This Dutch fighter skillfully took from multiple styles and strategies to learn a million and one ways to set up his devastating low kicks. I am speaking of course of the man many consider to be the greatest kickboxer of all time, the legendary Ernesto Hu. Hu's took multiple titles in Muay Thai, Savat, and K1, winning the prestigious kickboxing organization's championship belt an astounding four times. Hus was by no means the strongest, biggest, fastest, or most powerful kickboxer in the world. But what he did have was an absolutely insane low kick and the intelligence to put it to good use. Hust was an elite leg kicker in large part because he was so good at defending leg kicks. How does this make any sense? Well. Hus knew that a fighter's leg is never more vulnerable than during or immediately after they throw a kick. So, by defending kicks so efficiently, Hus could immediately transition into a kick of his own, taking advantage of his opponent's momentary weakness. A big reason this tactic worked so well was the unique way that Hus checked leg kicks. Hus checks were actually a weapon in and of themselves. In the same way head movement can turn into headbutts in Lothue, Hus leg checks could turn into crippling knees that devastated his opponent's legs. Hus landed several knockdowns and even knockouts with his checks alone. A big part of this working was the way that Hus preferred to turn his shin towards an opponent's kick, assuring that bone would strike bone. While many fighters, including the great Fedora Emelianenko, prefer to lift their knees straight up to avoid damage, Hust instead preferred to endure a bit more pain in order to cause his opponents a lot more pain. But as effective as this was, Hust's true secret, as simple as it may seem, was the way that he lifted his leg off the ground. Hust would lift his knees straight up as usual for body kicks, but for leg kicks, Hust liked to simply pull his heel straight back. Not only is this quicker and a very effective way to stop calf kicks and side kicks in MMA, it can also turn a check into a fight ending knee. Similar to the check that broke Anderson Silva's leg in half, Hus drove the hardest part of his knee right into his competitor's shin. Always creative, Hus would also hop or fall into a punch right off of this check. One last benefit of checking this way is that it keeps the leg lower than usual. Which means that it blocked opponents attempting to kick Hoost's support leg. Hoost himself was very fond of going after an opponent's support leg as they attempted to check. But Hoost did not rely on checks alone. He also had a unique approach to bracing. While he loved using the more common tactic of sinking down to take a kick and countering with a punch, Hoos could also brace very well while kicking. He sunk so low that his knee at times made a right angle, assuring that he had a more stable support leg in any dual exchange. Hoos' last defensive tactic was to slide his leg back, sometimes blending the movement seamlessly into a rear leg round kick, as sliding his leg back started his hips turning. Of course, Hus' opponents attempted to check and counter as well. But as DC put it, there are levels to this. 
many opponents quickly found that their counters had just been countered. But Hus didn't just return counters, he was enough of a master to throw intercepting counters too. Unless your opponent is in Ganu, it's safe to say that kicks hurt much worse than punches, so it makes sense that Hus loved to slip punches in order to land leg kicks. Sometimes he would jab to draw a punch just to get a chance at destroying an opponent's leg. But just as he intercepted punches with kicks, Hus would intercept kicks with more kicks. So Hus's entire game focused around his kicks. But if an opponent could just get close enough, they could smother Hoost in the clinch, taking away his most dangerous weapon. Or not. Astonishingly, Hoost could leg kick just as well from the clinch. He set this up the same way many Muay Cao Thai fighters like to set up their knees. He would turn an opponent with collar ties or underhooks to off-balance them. At the same time, he would sneak one leg back to make room for his kicks. As if this weren't damaging enough, Hoost would often pair these with knees. But if an opponent tried to knee Hoost, he would take out their support leg. Of course, Hoost could also just push an opponent away to create the space necessary. But this is far more nuanced than it seems at first glance. Hoost had to move himself and his opponent at the perfect time and the perfect angle. Ideally, Hoos could make contact with the back of his opponent's leg. Or, he could frame off an opponent's head to place it in position. Hoos steered many opponents into KO head kicks this way. But Hoost was far from a one-kick pony. Uh, As he progressed over the years, his boxing got much, much better. And Hoost used this newfound skill to, you won't believe this, set up more kicks. In fact, many times a punch would cause an opponent to move off angle, and Hoost would take advantage of this new space to score highlight reel KO kicks. So you get it, Hoost had a million and one ways to set up his legendary kicks. But what made his round kick so effective that he could base an entire style around landing it? Well, Hoost had an unusual way of throwing his kick to begin with. It's already been mentioned that Hoost would sink low into his kicks, but he would also crouch. While it's normal to move your head offline to stay safe from punches, Hoost took it to the extreme, leading deep to his left. This not only allowed him a faster start to his kick, similar to Dempsey's drop step, it also blended well into several other power shots. When opponents saw Hoos dip left, they never knew if he was easing into a roundhouse, body cross, or loading up a lead head or liver shot. Another important component of Hoost's kick was the way he altered the trajectory of his leg mid-strike. Hoost's flexible hips, combined with his crouch, allowed him to throw his kicks with his shin near parallel to the floor. This is the ideal structure and follow-through for a roundhouse kick, but it's difficult to pull off when kicking this low. What's more, as Hoost's kick connected, he would actually turn his foot up, adding a last-second acceleration upon follow-through. While Hoos most likely turned his foot up as he straightened for defensive purposes, it seems self-evident that the movement dealt extra damage to his opponent's leg, in the same way that twisting a punch upon contact can cause extra bruising and swelling. The results speak for themselves. Hoost is a testament of how to best play to your strengths as a fighter. Rather than arrogantly counting on his best weapon to work on its own in every situation, Hoost instead developed his style to remain flexible, ensuring that no matter who stood in front of him, he always had a path to victory. And for me, 
This is the sign of not just a fully developed fighter, but a fully developed human being. Because in reality, there is no perfect fighter. In a sport where every technique, every style has weaknesses to exploit, then the only fighter who can prevail is one who can put aside their preferences, truly see the shape of the fight, and adapt. So in that way, it seems to me that Hoost very much earned his nickname of Mr. Perfect. Let everyone know in the comments what fighter you'd like to see next and why. I'm gonna make a concerted effort to pick fighters and topics mostly from the comments this year as a bit of a New Year's resolution. Also, stay tuned for new series and arcs from Mike Tyson and other legendary heavyweight fighters from the 90s to Muay Thai and kickboxing classics. From the modern martial artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.